Hi and welcome to the channel. Today will be a follow-up video on my Denshu 4 Plus V2 build. So the issue in this build was the CPU thermal performance which was very bad. In my opinion, it was above 80 degrees on average while gaming. So I thought that there might be some problems with it. Another thing is to check, sorry if I mispronounce your name, Chung Hung. PC. Oh, I hope I pronounce it correctly. Anyway, he also commented that my riser problem can be resolved if I put the riser in between the motherboard and the motherboard tray. So I'll also try that. Then I will also address Prust P. I'm not sure if I pronounced it correctly as well. If it can fit a 2.5 inch SSD. Anyway, so I'll dismantle this first. Okay, so to address Prust first, uh, let me just get an SSD for reference. Okay, so I have an SSD here, which is the Crucial MX500. Where can you tuck this? Probably not here. You can probably tuck it here in the front. Yes, you can tuck it here. So as for SSD, you can tuck it here in the front. Again, there are no mounts for the SSD, so it will be left dangling. It depends on how you see this. Some might see that this is a risky move, but for me, this is fine for SSD. You cannot put it in the graphics card side. The top, it's not also possible. Yeah, I think you can put it in the front only. Okay. Okay, so let me discuss first the issue with this setup. The issue is that likely, I'm not sure, these heat pipes are facing down. So again, it will be like this when mounted. And there is a problem if your heat pipes are facing down. Note that there are some liquid inside the heat pipe. So when your CPU is hot, it heats up the liquid and evaporates to the ends of the heat pipe and then condenses back to the CPU or to the cold plate. So it's a cycle. So if your setup is like this, then you're against gravity. If it heats up, it will probably just end up here at this point. It will not go to the end of the heat pipe. That's my theory. Uh, there are some discussions on how heat pipes work. It's a very interesting uh, topic on how, I should say, thermal engineering works. So yes, my next goal is to dismantle this cooler and flip it upside down. I will not even replace it just to check if it will have any impact. Okay, so the heat pipe is now facing upward. It looks downward, but it will be facing upward. Now it's time to plug this in. So before I plug back the spine, I should install this riser. And it will be like this. Okay, so the riser is now in between the motherboard and the motherboard tray. Seems that I can screw two holes now easily. Okay, so yes. So that's a good technique from Chong Hong. Now it's fully inserted. Okay, so it's easier to slide now. Okay, so I have a new USB 3.2 to USB C. I'll try this. Positive. Okay, so I have to test now the CPU thermals. Okay, so upon turning on the PC, I noticed that the GPU is still heating the side panels again. However, this time around, I had to loosen up the lower right part of the side panel instead of the upper right. I guess the GPU is still a bit slanted. I also tested the USB-C and it was working now, so that's good news for me. As for the temps, it improved from 82.6 degrees Celsius to 78.76 degrees Celsius, which is a 3.8 degrees Celsius improvement. It is still a bit far from the open test bench temps at 75.71 degrees Celsius. Although between a closed case and an open test bench, it is normal to have this margin of difference. This means that the low profile CPU cooler orientation really has an effect on its thermal performance. To somehow prove my point even further, I found this article from Noctua. It says here that the bench should be pointing downwards. Although I find this article somewhat 
confusing. I mean, what's the difference between a tower style case and a desktop case? Anyway, with my extremely simplified explanation on how a heat pipe works, I think everything makes sense. You can also try to Google heat pipe bend orientation and you'll see a few articles supporting claims on gravity as well. As to update my tips for this case, you no longer need to ensure that you have a 195mm PCIe riser. If you have a 185mm PCIe riser, then you can follow Chong Hong PC's recommendation as a workaround. You can then save money rather than spending for a new PCIe riser. I guess that's it for now. I hope you like this update on my build and on how low profile cooler orientation affects thermal performance. Do comment down below on what you think. Finally, it has been a relatively great year for me. Thanks to all the subscribers and viewers to my channel. And I hope that you'll continue to support this channel moving forward. As usual, thanks for watching. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing and benchmarks. Bye!